Okay, the way, um, a simple exercise. You want to think that the 1, 4, and 5 are going to lay out the same way every time. So if you play it as a bass line, you just get 1, 4, 5, 1. Made up their minds. And they start. That's the fourth note of the F sharp scale. Fifth note. Left before the sun came up that day. So that. That's a fixed physical relationship on the fretboard, so it doesn't matter what key I'm in. So we did an exercise where we put in a bunch of different keys. So we did F sharp, made up their minds, the original key, four, five. And now if Elizabeth comes along and says, Dad, that's too low, can we put it in G minor? Oh, sure we can. Made up their minds. It's almost like you can just close your eyes and play the same thing. You don't have to overthink it. Part of the reason guitar players tend to be a little bit ignorant about harmony and harmonic theory. Because for us, it's just a matter of spatial relationships. Oh, you don't like G? Let's do A. Made up their minds, and they started four. My one, four, five are dependable. Okay, maybe it's still too low. I'm gonna do it in B. Made up their minds, and they started packing. You get the idea. Now, if I wanted to play those in major keys, all that would happen was the chords would be major, all three of them. F sharp major, B major, C sharp major, back. G1, 1, 4, 5 are the pillars. They're unchanged, right? You figure out heartbreak on your own, and you, you figure out the relationships exactly. But the key was not right. The key is E. But they use the flat three and the flat seven, or flat six, like from a minor scale. So a minor scale in E goes one, two, flat three, four, five, flat six, flat seven, eight. And the flat three is G. So that's a G major. And the flat seven is C. So that's a C major. So the heartbreaker went. Flat three, flat seven, no flat six, sorry. Okay, so there's another example of how harmony, that's mixing chords from major and minor keys. Um, so those are the ones that actually change when you go from major to minor. But the one, four, five are unaffected except in the sense that the chords are either minor chords or major chords. But the root notes, the physical root notes, are gonna stay put right where they started. So I don't have to worry about them when I change keys. Okay, the other thing we noticed um, is, is that for whatever reason, whether you're observing yourself or you're thinking about, sometimes you, you come in real funky on your B minor and things get flat, which is exactly the opposite of what we want. The, you have to diagnose this quickly anytime you're playing. All these knuckles here have to be stay curved. If you see any of this, something's going on. So you could do um, even some silent practice where you just keep those fingers curved, C to B minor. And then I had you put it up a whole step and start with this D. Go to this C sharp minor. So you're practicing the same relationship but in a different part of the fretboard. Then start up way up here at the seventh fret to the sixth fret. And just always observing the knuckles. That final knuckle has to be curved in any key that you do this exercise in. And I recommend doing it in different keys often because the same trail, it can only yield so much information and, and you want to be backing away from it. But when you do play in that key, single chords and peaceful, you know, make sure you're breathing, make sure you're keeping your hand as relaxed as possible. You can just play that little progression on a loop. If you get bored, put a capo on, on two, and do it in some other key. Anything to keep it fresh in your mind, in your hand is useful in my book. That's it for this week, brother. Have fun.